Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Irem B. Tobias from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. So I'll be presenting to you today a part of my MSc thesis. Yeah. On the identity of Rafflesia banawana, a unique and magnificent flower of the Banao indigenous cultural community. Before I introduce to you Rafflesia banawana, I'd like first to introduce to you this species. This is Rafflesia speciosa, described on 2002 from the Panay Island. It is known locally as Urung, Kalopasung, and Karaya. The discovery of this species marked the beginning of the renewed interest on Philippine Rafflesia. Rafflesia, which is a queen of flowering plants. Rafflesia occur only from Thailand to West and Central Malaysia, Borneo, Sumatra, Java, Malaya, and the Philippines. These species have high endemism, hence majority have a restricted range of distribution. Rafflesia CE, unique and peculiar from typical, typical plants, considering by having a largest solitary flower, it has no leaves, it has no photosynthesis, and it is totally parasitic to a single genus tetrastigma from a grape family. It has unique floral parts, perigon lobe, diaphragm, disc, and processes. These floral parts make the species extraordinarily beautiful. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, majority of these species are found in the Philippines, considered both a megadiverse country and a biodiversity hotspot with more than 50% of endemic flowering plants. As a megadiverse country, it is not surprising that new species of Aplesia were discovered since, since the discovery of Rafflesia speciosa in 2002. Now we have 14 species of Rafflesia. All are endemic to the Philippines, and in the Philippine National Red List, about 13 species are included as threatened. Only one species have been assessed through IUCN Red List Assessment. Now, the most recent is Rafflesia consuloi, described on 2016 and tagged as the smallest among the giant flowers. So it has a diameter of 6.6 .6 centimeter to 12.7. So I traveled throughout the Philippines to document this beautiful and magnificent flower. And I will say to you that the current state of this species is very unfortunate and heartbreaking. It really symbolizes the precarious state of the Philippine biodiversity. This is Rafflesia. Okay, this is Rafflesia banhawensis, found in low elevation forests of Mount Manahaw, San Cristobal protected landscape in the province of Quezon, Luzon Island. It is found in two locations before, but only one remained. It is due to due to continuous decrease of forest due to agricultural land expansion and urbanization. The people there told me that the host vine of this species were cut by the people. I don't know, maybe they are not aware of these species, so they cut the vine. So it is only occurring in one location. And another species is Rafflesia balete. It is a small sized Rafflesia discovered in Mount Isarog, province of Camarines Norte in Bicol region, same island in Luzon. It is previously occurring in three locations now found only in one location. It is documented only in a patch of a secondary forest with less than 500 square meter between plantations of Musa te Textilis. And lastly, this is Rafflesia lunardi, described on 2008 from a remote place in the province of Cagayan in the same island of Luzon. My expedition to see this species is the most disappointing and the most challenging so far. I traveled by land for 15 hours and by sea for six hours just to see this and only to find out that the host vine of this species has been devastated by the typhoon Ompong in 2018. The last scene, this species on 2015 when the group of Dr. Julie Barcelona, who is the authority in Rafflesia CE, collected specimens for their phylogenetic and biogeographic study. 
After that, it has not been observed. It is found in the lush forests of northern part of Sierra Madre mountain range. This is the Sierra Madre mountain range. So this mountain range serves as the eastern backbone of the Luzon Island. But this part of Sierra Madre is not a protected area. You see, the Rafflesia is both threatened by humans and natural disasters. These species are at the brink of extinction due to continuous land, land conversion and deforestation driven by humans, forest fragmentation, expansion of agricultural land and shifting cultivation, habitat and forest degradation, and worsening, worsening natural disasters due to climate change. All hope is gone, but there is no reason to lose hope. When I visited this place, I gained motivation. It is true, we cannot afford, afford to lose hope as a conservation worker, as a botanist. This is the Banao Protected Landscape, tagged as the green heart of the Cordillera, same island in the zone. This landscape is home to lush forest, primary forest. And in this place, it has the lowest reduction rate of forest over the dec of, throughout the decades. Within this landscape, we will see this species, Rafflesia banawana, found in the heart of the Banao protected landscape. So that's the species. This species described in 2010, named in honor of the Banao indigenous people to recognize the exemplary traditional forest management practices, and supposedly the six species described in Luzon, until it was, it was anonymized in 2011 as similar with Rafflesia Lenardi. Do you think they are the same? No. Yes, this is Rafflesia Banawana. Thank you, Dr. Chris, for your beautiful illustration here. <laughs> yeah, but I will say that Rafflesia Banawana is a good species. And it, and, and it requires taxonomic rec recognition at species rank, speaking in a taxonomic and cultural perspective. Yeah. So Rafflesia banawana is morphologically distinct from Rafflesia lenardi with numerous characters of its floral parts. Looking at a matured flower, longitudinal, longitudinal section of the female flower, at the ovary, stigmatic surface, and this undersurface. Rafflesia banawana is larger in size. It has larger warts in the perigon lobe. It, has a, uh, it doesn't have an ear-like structure at the base of perigon lobes, unlike in, in Rafflesia lenordi. And it has a slanted perigon tube. Look at that. And then in Rafflesia lenardi, it has, a, it has an upright perigon tube. The presence of annulus exterior forming a canal in between the annulus interior. This is the canal. And by looking at the longitudinal section of Rafflesia lenardi, it doesn't have any annulus ex exterior. And the ovary differs in size and shape. Look at this. It has a taller ovary shape. And then this is the ovary of Rafflesia lenardi. And most importantly, it doesn't have a dense bristle, unlike in Rafflesia lenardi. It has a different symmetrical pattern. This is the symmetrical pattern I, was, I am talking. Yeah. Rafflesia lenardi has extrusions here at the middle. And smaller anthers attach in brown colored structure. This is the brown colored structure. And distinct processes. Processes of Lafficia Nardi have hairs at the apex. So I can say that Rafflesia banawana is a unique and magnificent flower of the Banao indigenous cultural community. 
Malabrigo in 2010 described these species as unique from, among, from other species by having a uh, larger flower size, but Barcelona argued that flower size is substantially variable. Yes, that is true, but the distinct processes is not variable. I've documented the species having a, a size of 33 centimeters, which is comparatively smaller than the observation of Malabrigo. So I can say this is a different species and a good species. So the Philippines, now the center of diversity of Rafflesia. We have 15 species described to date, eight in Luzon Island, four in Mindanao, two in Panay, and one in Samar. And I'd like to emphasize on these species. I'm not yet sure if this is one of the described species, but I, ha I have thoughts that it could be another species. Look at this. This is Rafflesia panchoana. Some called it Rafflesia legasque. This is Rafflesia in Mount Masaraga. This is Rafflesia in Mount Ginatungan. This is Rafflesia lobata in Panay Island. They don't look the same, but I'm not yet sure. I will try to find out more on this. Yeah. So we have small size Rafflesia and large size Rafflesia. Much work is still need to be done, both on the taxonomy and conservation. We knew that there is a continuous and progressive loss of habitats. And we knew that another mass extinction will happen in the Anthropocene period. These species are on the verge of extinction due to these threats. And we need to discover first the potential medicinal value and economic benefits of these species. As of to date, there are no published pharmacological studies about these species in the Philippines. But in Indonesia and Malaysia, this species is known, to, is known with various traditional uses. So it purifies the uterus after childbirth. It is being added to cinnamon to stop bleeding after childbirth and strengthens weak organs. It is aphrodisiac for women. <laughs> and then it is known to have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-cancer properties. So I call on the need for sustainable conservation of Rafflesia in the Philippines. Scrap. Yeah. We need to scrap the taxonomic ambiguity and nomenclatural crisis on Rafflesia CE. We need to scrap the barriers that inhibit its sustainable conservation. And we need to scrap the threats that may cause extinction of the species. Through research by collaboration, and continuous communication with the local government units in the Philippines, I aim to scrap these threats. So thank you. I would like first to thank the organizers of the Plants People Planet Symposium, to Dr. Chris Rogod, Freja, and Dr. Bennett Young for keeping in touch with me. Yeah, because I had a long journey going here, more than 15 hours from the Philippines. <laughs> I also thank the USAID, the Department of Science and Technology in the Philippines, the University of the Philippines, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and the National Museum of the Philippines. Before I end this presentation, I would like to leave this message. Taxonomy gives species a name, an identity. Do you agree? Yeah. But we need to also work beyond taxonomy through conservation. Conservation assessment. Because this conservation assessment is equally important with taxonomy by giving this species a voice. So that's all. Thank you very much for your time.